Mmm, it's an orange juice. We've got an interesting new card. The Ram Rider. She snares each unit in order of which unit is closer to her, but she will prioritize units that have not been snared yet. She has almost the same health as a Hog Rider, but she does cost one elixir more and has a charge. Without her charge, she actually doesn't move that fast. It's kind of a double-edged sword. I'll explain in a bit. With a 1.1 attack speed and a 2 second snare duration, she can really only snare a maximum of 2 units at any given time. Her snare stops charger units like Prince, Battle Ram, and the Dark Prince. She has a range of 5.5 tiles, which is the same range as a wizard, so you have to know which units you're using to defend her. For example, a Sparky planted in the back of your tower is not going to stop her. Sparky's range of attack is one tile shorter. Sparky will not be within range. All you need to remember is that the Princess, Magic Archer, Dark Goblin, Musketeer, Flying Machine, they will all outrange her. But she will have a range advantage against every other unit that she can snare. When charging up, it's based on the distance she's able to travel. Just like Prince and Battle Ram, the charging mechanic activates at precisely 3.5 tiles that they've traveled. When she's defending against a swarm, it's incredibly difficult to know which unit she'll snare next. Generally, it's the closest non-snared unit, but that's kind of hard to read when there are thousands of skeletons coming at you. This is not a card you can ever ignore. Left alone, she can deal over 1500 damage to your tower. The Ram Rider has a different sight range. It's longer than regular units. Regular units are typically 5.5 tiles. Now the Hog Rider is 9.5 tiles. But the Ram Rider, she's a 7.5 tile sight range. So she will be pulled by cannons and everything else in the center. But she will not go towards that center planted elixir collector like a Hog Rider can. A single Hog Rider can be stopped completely with her snare ability. Completely. Immobilizing the Hog Rider, giving your tower time to chip him away. That being said, she does have trouble with multiple units. So think Royal Hogs. There's gonna be four of them. That, there's just way too many piglets to snare all at once. Even the Battle Ram and the two Barbarians can be stopped completely. This is a really cool interaction, but you have to place her perfectly. So when the Barbarians erupt, they kind of chase her a bit across the bridge. If a lone melee unit is coming towards you, wait until that unit is close to your Prince's Tower before planting her to avoid any damage on your Prince's Tower or even your Ram Rider. If you place her directly behind your Prince's Tower, your own tower blocks her path and forces her to walk around your own tower, slowing down her charge, maximizing the time that she spends on your side of the river to defend that counter push. She can also do this with any thick unit, kind of like how you put a prince behind a giant to slow down the prince and slightly speed the giant up to connect the tower faster. When oncoming giants have crossed the bridge, plant her directly in the line with the giant's path to block her path and maximize her snare time. You want her to struggle on your side. She has an interesting mechanic where she can snare both the witch and the night witch, preventing them from spawning any of their skelly bat babies. It's one of the scariest things that a witch can do. Not against this tenacious trapper. She does have a really fast 1.1 second attack speed. Planting her a bit further back, she can really stop a lot of damage from graveyard. The Ram Rider is really good at defending against units and translating that into a counter attack. You can build a big push or you can just have her ram in by herself. She is a 5 elixir card after all. She can jump the river just like the hog can. The ram has a larger sight range just like the hog does, but she snares at the same time and can be used to counter attack while snaring the units in place for your prince's tower to destroy. You can do this against most units. Really notable units are going to be Dark Prince, Bandit, Hunter, Inferno Dragon, Guards, Valkyrie, and even Electro Dragon. Timing is key. There are two different types of kites that she can do. She can jump the river at any given spot, but she can also kite units running onto the opposite bridge. Plant her four tiles down from the river on the opposite side, and she'll kite without jumping. This is especially useful for units that are really tanky. You may need them to kite a little longer to take more damage from the Prince's Tower. The crazy thing is she is the 
only one who can do this because she is the only one who can jump the river and charge while doing it. The slower movement speed to get her charge is very useful. Timing and placement is key. She can defend the cannon cart on your side of the map. Make sure to plant her further back so that it buys your tower time to destroy the cart. She'll have her charge ready and ram bam bam the cart is done. She's quite good with big tanks. This really utilizes her snare ability to support units. She's very versatile by herself or even with big tanks. Now with her really long snare duration, she can completely immobilize a balloon so long as that balloon is by itself. Some say she's weak against swarms. I disagree. She can completely stop a Skarmy. Well, this is of course if you plant her behind your princess tower. If you've been baited and you don't have any spells in rotation, she actually isn't that bad against the Goblin Barrel. Defend her and they'll only get three total stabs, all thanks to her really fast attack speed. Pairing her up with Freeze can do some major damage, similar to Hog Freeze, but it is not an elixir. The freeze can be used as a surprise factor, where you use it in double elixir and you freeze to take the tower. Hog 2.6, more like Ram 2.8, welcome to 2019. One of the best and overlooked synergies in the Ram Rider today is knockback. Now, this can be in any form from skeleton, barrel, fireball, or anything but snowball. Now, if you have snowball in there and they have a mini P.E.K.K.A coming at you, you snowball that mini P.E.K.K.A out of range of the Ram Rider and that mini P.E.K.K.A is going to be permanently ensnared while the Ram Rider destroys the tower. This is an amazing synergy that just wrecks. With all of these wacky strengths, how do you counter her? One way is to place units to block her path, if it's a single unit. Place it close enough to both the Ram Rider and the Princess Tower so that your defender can reach the Ram Rider even if she's at the tower and snared. You've got to be real careful. If you get too greedy and you don't plant it close enough, she's going to snare melee units that are almost within range and she's going to deal a lot of damage. Speaking of snaring melee units, if you plant a bandit too early, she may dash. But after that first dash, you're out of luck because of that perma snare. Keep in mind if your defending unit has range, then put it in her path earlier. This is to limit as much damage as possible while trying to stop her as fast as possible. If you're trying to defend her with a melee unit, make sure to plant them directly in her path while still in range of her after they're snared. If not, get ready for a world of pain. The Ice Spirit can still land on her, you just have to plant it in her path so it can jump onto her. If you plant it too far, her trap will snare the poor spirit and it will not be within range to jump. Just like the Hog Rider or the Battle Ram, she can be completely stopped by the bowler without getting any damage because of her slow movement speed before her charge. Lavaloon can now be separated much more easily at the bridge to counter the balloon, more effectively weakening the Lavaloon synergy. She has trouble defending the hordes because she switches units so fast. Zappies can completely shut her down if you can kind of get them into a perma stun placement. Hmm, maybe I should make a Zappies tech video. The Mega Knight can easily stop her without trouble with his knockback and sheer size. She can't avoid getting jumped on. It is going to completely deny her from connecting to the tower. Electro Wizard can stop her right at the bridge as well. Utilize his spawn attack and get some damage in because she has a longer range than him if you plant him further away. Garmy has enough swarm to stop her from connecting to your princess tower while Goblin Gang still lets her connect. Because the rider targets units, pairing her with Zap completely stops the Goblin Gang and all other swarmies just because it allows her to one-shot each of the goblins. She is a charging unit, which means you can stop her charge with any kind of knockback or stun mechanic like Zap, Log, Fireball, Snowball, Rocket, and Lightning. Every spell timing is different. If you use it too early, she's going to get her charge value. My recommended timing is right before she's about to connect to the tower. So it does feel a bit wrong to Lightning a Battle Ram or to Lightning a Hog Rider just because they cost 4 Elixir. That's a negative trait. And the Ram Rider has mechanical similarities to both. You might think it's wrong to Lightning the Ram Rider, but you have to realign your thinking. She actually costs 5 Elixir, and her charge is reset by the stun as well. It's perfectly fine to Lightning her. If she comes behind an Ice Golem or anything else at all, you have yourself there a positive Elixir trait. It's totally cool to rocket her. It isn't that bad of an idea because she does cost 5 elixir after all. If you can get anything else along with her, it's going to be a positive elixir trade. You can tornado her to the king tower to activate it. 
but you must time it precisely and pull her a bit early or she will get two hits on the tower, including that nasty charge damage. And if you're too early, it might not even pull her to the king tower at all. If you have units that outrange her, you can place them in the opposite lane and keep defending. They might take a couple hits, but this way you can defend as much as possible while setting up for a counterattack of your own. Minion Horde does stop her, but barely. It's a close call and she'll be really close to the Prince's Tower. It will be devastating if you rely on your Minion Horde and your opponent happens to have a Zap. Her Snare is going to pick off the minions one by one and the Ram is going to connect to your tower. Traditionally, Tombstone is decent at stopping Giants or even Hogs because they've got to whack the Tombstone a couple of times before it pops. And then once it pops, those Skeletons assist in taking out the Hog. But with the Ram Rider, her charge damage deals a bit over 400 damage, annihilating the Tombstone building. And then the Rider Snares picks off every single Skeleton one by one. That Tombstone is a negative elixir trade. That being said, all other spawner buildings do stop her much more easily. They're not as fragile as Tombstone or even the Skeletons are. All defensive towers stop her easily. Even a cannon can endure her charged ram. This is a juicy, positive elixir trade. Just like when the Hog Rider is coming in on you, you can plant the mortar to counterattack while your Prince's Tower takes care of the Ram Rider. You could do this with your Expo, but that's 6 for 5 and you should only be used if you have nothing else. Just make sure to plant the Siege Building before she walks at 3.5 tiles and gets her charge down. She's very good at countering herself. Who would have thunk? So if you find yourself in a Ram versus Ram situation, use her on your side of the map to defend. This is a huge advantage because your Ram Rider is being immobilized as well. That allows you to build a bigger elixir advantage for a bigger counter push. Looking currently at the top 3 decks that's being used, she seems to have replaced the Hog Rider in the original 2.6 Hog Cycle. It's 2019. 2.8 Ram Cycle is in baby. She also seems to be able to directly substitute Battle Ram in 3 Musketeer decks. The third deck looks kind of interesting, it's like a brand new deck entirely, but it does have a high win rate and challenges. I've seen some interesting decks in her, some Bait Freeze and even some Goblin Barrel. Overall, she currently has a high win rate on challenges, but with new cards, they generally do have a higher win rate when released because people haven't learned how to counter her yet. I don't expect to see a nerf in the next week when they announce the changes on Friday. She's a very interesting card because of her versatility, she's able to directly substitute a Hog Rider, she's able to directly substitute a battle ram. Hope this video helped. Stay juicy.